Hi, I'm Toby from Toby's Urban Sketch and today we're going to have a go at drawing the ambitious Neptune's Fountain which is a fountain in the centre of Cheltenham, my hometown. Uh, if you enjoy my videos please do hit the like button and subscribe, it's a real support to my little channel and also leave a comment to let me know what you think. The, the reference photo, I'll, I'll leave a link to it in the bottom of the description along with letting you know all the materials I'm using. And to start with, I'm, I've got a bit of A5 Cardi rag paper. So this is 100% cotton. It's handmade, it's got these sort of ragged edges. It's really thick and sort of hard wearing. It gives you quite an industrial rugged look to your sketches as well, I always think. And we're going to start off like normal with a couple of fine liners. So this one is a Winsor Newton 0.1 mil fine liner. This one's a Unipin 0.5. Um, the reason I like the Winsor Newton ones quite quite a lot is I don't know if you can see, but they've got a very long uh, nib to them compared to say this, which despite being a much bigger pen has a slightly shorter nib. Um, the reason I like that is because it, it means I find them a bit longer lasting and it also means that the, the the line can be a little bit more varied compared to a very short nib which is very difficult to then vary the quality of the line. Anyway, let's get started. So this fountain's not the least complex of things to draw. It's got a, a man and a few horses in the foreground. So I'm going to start with getting some of those basic shapes in. And as always, we're, we're getting basic shapes. We're not focusing on being exact. And we can always go back over these lines when we think later we can do them a bit more accurately. So this is our, our man, Neptune himself. And he's sitting down on the edge of the fountain comes out and then we've got these sort of vase shapes coming up at the side then moving in front of him his other arms up and out holding a trident You can see I'm not drawing all the bits of the trident yet. I'm just getting the, like I say, the basic shapes in. Got a horse coming across here. Another one coming in here. And let's just get the base of our shapes in as well. I'm going to bring the front of the fountain into view and using that we'll be able to place hopefully everything else going on in this scene. So then we've got all the other horses coming in the front. So what I'm doing is picking out basic shapes These are almost just triangles. They don't have to be completely accurate either, so we're changing what we see a little bit to make it sort of easier, more interesting, or even just possible in a sort of sketchy manner. I'm sure that we could spend hours and hours and get this exactly right, but that's not why most people want to do urban sketching. They want to just capture essentially what's going on, the essence of what's going on. Okay, so we've got three horses, we've got the man, we've got the beginning of the shape of the fountain. These are all their hooves going over the edge. And 
and move all these steps up. Okay, now we got some more steps in the background. And right at the front. At the fountain itself. The big spray of water. And then we've got to get the background in as well. So there's a, a fence line. Which doesn't actually continue on this side because our um, vase like objects cover it up. Instead over here we have a different fence line at the top. And then we've got a large building. Which lets us get a sense of scale in. Let me just get that perspective and the relationships about right. So where it's coming in with respect to the horses and where it's leaving with respect to Neptune. There's a top story which is only part of the building. There's some fun little um what are they call chimneys, chimney stack, yeah. Okay. And then it's all obscured by a a tree. What we're gonna do with the tree today is get in the the shape of its outline and just fill in some of these almost geometric shapes of its leaves which lets us know exactly what we're talking about but without actually having to fill in the detail and where it's a bit darker we do a few more layers of these geometric leaves and just in the middle a couple scattered around as well. There we go. So with just a few lines already I think you can get the idea. Man, a tree, a, possibly a fountain. Now with the Cardi paper you'll notice these lines are, are very very indistinct. Uh, if you were using more normal watercolour paper, these lines would be a bit bolder and I'd have been a little bit more cautious with how I was using it. But because of what, because we know what we're using, um, we didn't have to be. So next we're going to go in with our 0.5. And we're going to just add in a little bit more detail. a bit more of the shape in. It's got a big beard going on. As with all Greek statues, plenty of muscles. This is where we're just paying a little bit more attention, using our previous lines as a, as definitely a guide. But as with any guide, a guide can tell us if we were wrong before or right before. And there's the three parts of our spear. And he's also wearing a, a shawl or a cape. I feel like Neptune himself might be angry if I said he was wearing a shawl. Just kind of 
turn this around. Okay. And we got first of our shapes coming in up from there. I must confess, I'm not actually sure what that is supposed to be. Um, but it doesn't matter, we're just getting the, the general idea of it in. Because the bits I'm more interested in are the man himself and the, the horses in front of him. As you can see, just loose lines can gradually build up to create quite a lot of shape without having to be too exacting about the detail in the, in the first instance. So the next one is looking towards us. So it's just about changing the direction of the shape without overthinking too much. So all we got is a sort of a rhomboid, a rhomboid, and then there's another one in the background here. Just get his feet general shape in. So there we are, we got the idea of a horse, a horse, another horse, a man. This could be a horse, it isn't a horse in the in the image. I think it's actually another looking at it, it's another person sort of lying back, but I think we've got enough of a, an idea in there that we don't actually need to further elucidate what that is. Okay. So that's the broad outline of our of our fountain done. Just add in some texture there, which helps us join everything up. And then we'll get to these stairs. Which are just repeating shapes which as a perspective change just broadens out for us. And then there's another little step here. This comes round. That's there. Okay, and this is all just building up shape and shape. So it's out of sight. And then there's our distant fence line. And just making it make sense by copying approximate shapes that are in the back to putting them in the front. I'm going to do the same here. Don't need to finish that shape off. By leaving it unfinished and in the background, you can. So stop the eye being drawn here and keep it drawn to where we want it to be. Now, 
think the next thing we'll do is add in this fountain. So it's designed as a sort of loose array of rocks. That's what it's supposed to look like. Um, and the light's very much coming that way. So on the left is where all the shadows are. To simulate that with pen it's very easy. You just add in a lot more lines on the side where the shadows are keeping all these loose squiggly lines and things to simulate the randomness of those rocks. Then you've got the, the water coming out. So you just get those texture lines in. A big part of the water is actually going to be leaving it blank when we, when we come to adding in our colour. And just going back over some of these shapes. Now the lines, you see, they don't have to exactly cross. I'm not really carefully going over the old lines I do at all. They add texture and they add depth, especially to a complex structure, which is more of a randomness, like a tree. Having that double line is actually, I always think, rather effective. As if there's a few people I see out there doing it very much on purpose, leaving double lines. And I think it's a really effective way of doing, well, doing this kind of thing, doing trees, doing foliage. And then we're onto our building. So I don't want this building to stand out too much. So you just got to be careful about how much detail I add. But I also want us to be clear about perspective and what is going on with it. So let's work that out as we do it. There are cool things like these chimneys. I always think a little chimney at the top adds a little bit of interest. And um, it's also an opportunity to splash a a bit of colour in at the end if we feel there's a highlight needed. There's a little little railing at the back of the image which I quite like. It gives a chance for a different quality of line which is another thing to keep the eye interested. And this is just adding in more details that I wasn't certain about at the beginning. And we'll ground the image with this other building coming in at the side. Okay. And what do we need in this building? I think we get some sort of structural lines in. And within these structural lines we can add some really loose windows. Again, keeping them loose because we don't want the eye drawn away. And these different structural lines just let us understand the perspective of the building, giving it context without, without any detail really. We can do some, some others here. We know there'll be windows, but I don't want to get putting bold lines around our, around our Neptune. Now what else can we do to enhance this before we move on to watercolour? It's important not to do too much because we can't take away. But we can add a little bit more shape. I think we can get some windows in, in here. And the back. Then let's get a bit more. So having put some stuff in here, I think we need a bit more tone and understanding going on here, which we've got. And let's get these, there should be some water in here. We'll get reflections of this fountain coming towards us, which is what these lines are. There are mini fountains all over these steps. Um, just debating whether to add them, I'm not sure yet. I think I have a sense that if we add these mini fountains, it will 
it will confuse the eye. At the moment, these could easily be steps down to look at this fountain, and I think adding in loads of little details there will be will confuse too much. So I'm, I'm going to leave those little fountains out. And I can't remember who said it, but there's a, a lovely quote about painting in general, which is something along the lines of, and I'm sorry for anyone who knows this quote, I don't want to see the truth, I want to see a beautiful life. And um, I mean, that encompasses what we do, isn't it? We're not trying to take a photo. Well, some of us are. But certainly I'm not trying to take a photo. I'm doing this from a photo. Or hopefully, you know, as COVID unravels from real life. And you don't want to tell, you don't want it to, to see exactly what's there. You want to see something interesting, which does might mean you, you change the... Uh, the colours, it might mean you add some details, take some details. You know, in a nice um, British countryside landscape, you might remove a pylon or even add a pylon, depending on what you like about these kind of landscapes. Just mirroring our railing over here, up here, because I thought it'd be interesting to, to get that theme running through a bit more. Okay, so I think that is, in fact, the pen done now. So it's time to move on to adding some interesting colour to this. So for the watercolours, I'm just going to use my normal palette, which is this. It's got a few different blues, reds and yellows, my favourite colours in there, a couple of greens as well, and a couple of tonal colours. And I'll talk you through what I'm using as I use it. I'll pop my little mixing area there so you can see as well. And I'm just going to be using two different brushes, a size 6 and a size 8. These are both by Etcher. They're, um, I actually got them as part of working with them uh, a couple of months ago. And for this kind of thing, I've got to say they're not my favourite brush. But what they're very good at is um, fine and detailed work rather than um, really loose and watery work, which is what we're doing today. Um, the reason I'm using them today is it's always good to try things out and see if you change your mind about things. And also because my normal brush roll has gone walkies and I'm not exactly sure it is. I'm sure it's somewhere in my house though. So let's get started. Um, if you've seen any of my stuff before, you'll know I normally start with the sky. And we're going to do that today. So it's good to sort of have a bit of a plan about how you're going to go into something. And if I'm honest, my plan extends only as far as the surrounding colours. I'm not certain what we're going to do with the fountain itself. Um, but because I know what I'm going to do with the surrounding colours, it makes it easy to start and then work it out as we go along, see what it looks like, see what's needed. What I'm doing here is just adding loads of water around the sky area. I'm going to tilt the page a little and I'm going to use a couple of blues. So this is a Cerulean Chromium by Daniel Smith, which is a very nice, slightly cool blue. It um, granulates a lot. I think it, I've sort of experimented with the cool blues and this is my favourite so far compared to say um, Daniel Smith's Cerulean like Norm rather than Cerulean Chromium or even um, Winsor Newton's Cerulean. So you can see because it's so wet when you just drop the pigment in you get these lovely sort of spider webs coming out. The next colour I'm going to add a touch in is just a, um, this is an ultramarine blue, just to add a bit more depth to the, the colours in the sky here. And just mix them together, keep working them upwards. So we get an interesting variation. You can try just adding a bit of water back in. And 
You can just work the colours up a bit more. I'm bringing it to down, just bring it down to a fairly hard edge there. And while we've got these colours, water reflections tend to have a lot of the sky in them. So I'm going to start by just giving this water a loose base based on that sky colour and then we can add in more colours later. Is it not being quite as loose as I often am? That might change later but it's interesting to experiment and with something like this there's so much detail actually I don't 100% feel that a totally loose painting would be in its best interests. I do want to just loosen up this sky a little bit. don't want it to look like I've filled in the gap so just adding these splashes moving things around a bit more hopefully we'll do that. I think while it's still wet, I'm even going to add in a little bit of neutral tint. Neutral tints um, made by a few manufacturers now, and it's um, supposed to be a completely neutral colour. So you add it to something, and whatever colour you add it to, just becomes a darker version of that colour. Uh, a lot of them have a slight warmth or coldness to them, but. It's an interesting alternative to something like a Payne's Grey or or often I'll mix um, a burnt umber and a ultramarine and that creates a, I believe that's called Jane's Grey if you buy it, but a fairly neutral dark colour. This is a current favourite of mine and I have a huge tube of it to get through so I'm sure I'll, I'll learn more about it as well. It's a very good shadow colour because it is fairly neutral. So it does just provide depth and interest. So here's just some reflections in there as well. I hope you can agree already that's looking quite interesting for, compared to what it was before. Now where else can we go with these colours? I'm going to stick with the neutral tint and just build up a bit of tone to give us an idea of some shape going on here. So using a, a fairly light wash, I'll just pick out areas of tone. And as we start to get some shape, it might inspire colour choices or it might show us where we do or don't need to add colour. Just building up the tone in places. So we've got a light wash and then coming in with slightly more pigment. Again, if you've seen any of my stuff before you'll know that I like painting wet and letting the paint move itself around more than I like just painting perfectly and and leaving it at that. This chap's cape's got cape's gone up from cardigan hasn't it? It's got plenty of shadow in it. It's also got some highlights so I'm gonna leave just a little white in these areas and um this is this is where these etcher brushes are actually pretty good. They do paint pretty precisely. They form a really good tip. They just don't always uh, drop a lot of pigment in. Good for sort of really illustrative work, I think. There we are. See. Under his arm here is definitely a little darker. Uh, 
think we need to repeat this process on some of the horses. Broadly speaking, the tail is coming down and then is on the lower half of their jaw lines. This guy's muzzle and then the whole of his body. And this one in the back. So one thing we're aiming for is to create contrasts at boundaries so we can more easily pick objects out. So for example, where this horse meets this one, we leave it white. And that enables your eye to easily go from one to the other. How's that looking so far? Now we have to, I think we'll pop a little bit of some interesting colour in now just to see what happens. I'm going to go with Scarlet Lake, which is one of my favourite colours. It's a sort of primary red by Winsor Newton. I'm going to mix a little bit of that blue in just to dull it down. And we'll add this guy in here. This is a roof line, and this is where we will make it nice and loose. And I think in this building you can see it's sort of off white, but it may as well have a pinky blue tinge to it as well. And just to keep it loose and moving. Just going to angle my page, pick up a bit more, see what happens. Then we can move that pigment around. It's very intense just sat there, but that's no problem if we've painted wet. Because it can then just move for us. If we use these colours just to come around on Neptune. I think we'll find that he instantly stands out and things are becoming a bit more clear about what we might move forward to. Just going to take some more of that blue and bring it into this side of the building, which is definitely more in shadow. And then I think We'll also bring that bluey red, well, purple, under there. A bit more red dropped in, I think. This is all, this is what I like doing. You, 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 you pop some tone on, some colour on, you move things around, see what happens, decide what needs more, keep things fluid in length. So the blue's the same as the blue in the sky. And then we use that blue in our tones for the building and it all just ends up washing together creating just an interesting image. So I'm going to add a bit more ultramarine here and start to just bring out some of these more shadowy areas. Maybe we can even add some neutral tint in. That's good. some tone to some of these windows and again windows aren't necessarily dark they also they reflect the sky so if we just get some of that some of our blues tiny bit of our cerulean in just drop them in the windows okay so how are we doing It's building up slowly. I'm going to pop a bit of this neutral tint red onto this roof. I 
and it's bleeding up and that's fine that's the kind of thing i like to see happening it's not something i intended but it will certainly become interesting before long okay so let's go back to just adding some neutral tints around again okay i just noticed we can make our cylinders come to life a bit more if we just give them some shape and now that this is dried out we can see a lot of the variation because it's so wet a lot of the variation that we'd added in is already evened out so we can go back in again and just add that darker tone back in where we feel it's needed always keeping a few highlights of course These highlights are what accentuate the darker tones so things don't really look dark unless there's something light that your eye can compare them to. Similarly, things don't look light unless there's something dark that your eye can compare them to. And do the same for our horses. And they're still a little bit wet. Nothing on this page is really dried out. So even when I'm making these fairly specific additions, they will just spread and soften naturally. So you can see this bit's already softened, so I can already go back in and add a little bit more. And we have to decide exactly how specific we're going to get with some of this stuff. So I'm going to add some of the shape to Neptune's body, for example. But I'm not really interested in going completely to town on him. Okay. So you might be able to hear me wheeling back and forth. So what I'm doing is just wheeling back in my chair so I can really get a look at what I've done. And if anything needs doing more, which of course it always does, until you've done too much. Now, there's quite a lot of nice reflections going on here. Um, between the sun, uh, this kind of old stone i'm not sure what exact stone it is but it, it it gives you a golden green color which is i think found it's a bit in the tree we might leave that we might add it in There's lots of gold going on in the in the horses in neptune and more greens going on down here so to encompass that using more of my cerulean and then this is a quinacridone gold which is this very warm yellow and we're just gonna start adding this into various places so one place it's very prominent is at the top here i think we can go even golder and then as we move round it becomes round and down it becomes a greener and then over to the right a more neutralized shadowy color let's just get that in and then bring out those reflections so reflections come towards us so when we first paint in our reflections we need to keep that in mind 
rather than painting side to side, I can paint this way to make it a bit more neutral. And then to get in the side to side, which is actually the ripples rather than reflections, we can come in with water, we can add lines, just linking. And often I'll use a white gel pen, which we may do at the end here, just to really get that as well. Um, just going to drop some dark in the gap. Because the paper's wet, it will bleed up and down, which is exactly what's happening in the actual image. Then we have to decide with these steps, I think we're going to go loose. I'm almost going to half dry brush just that neutral tint in. Uh, drop a little bit of colour in places. And as we get around here, Tones actually get a, a little darker. Don't want to overdo it, but let's just darken up some of that. And again, I want these to, to link, so I want this neutral tone to go up and down. I'm going to drop some of this green in. It looks quite nice here. And I was worried it would take away a bit, but I don't think it has. So then under here we'll we've got a quite a dark colour. I think it's the um, shade from the tree or the reflection of the underside of the tree. Then as we come forward, it becomes very green again. And that's just. There we go. So those colours are gradually coming forward. If I bring it up, you will be able to see a bit better. So, what can we do next? I think we can just add a little bit more intensity to some of our background. So this is just that red again. This is adding texture more than anything. Get some of that neutral. A bit more of that red just to provide a real contrast to our Neptune chap. I'll show you where his boundaries are. physical boundaries rather than his emotional. A bit more shadow and then a bit of that red like I said I think we can really highlight a couple of things. Just dropping in some more intense areas, letting them move. So there, because it's not wet, it's not going to move enough, and I think it's a bit too intense. So I can just go back in with a wet brush and a little bit of that neutral, and then I can move it. And then it will now move itself, which is great. So, more of our neutral. I think um, I quite like this green that's going through. So. I'm going to keep, this is what I was talking about before when we sort of work out what we like as we go. I'm just going to mix a few of our colours together to try and get a bit more shape into here. And then just even more intense dark. a 
bit more quinacridone. And sort of picking out the more golden areas, if you like. Yeah, even more. And this is where I'm going to just experiment with some touches and see if they enhance or detract from what we've done so far. I think in moderation they might enhance. So let's try that. Then that's a bit of quinacridone in our neutral. So I'm just, I don't want all pure brightness. And I want to leave some of those real whites as well, so that we've areas which are still white. How else can we use that? I think we can get some tones into here. One thing I want to be careful of is getting too much detail where we've got this fountain. So how are we going to approach the fountain? Well, in the image it's essentially white. Uh, it's an absence of colour, which our eyes can easily pick out as a fountain but it's hard to paint that way. So what I'm going to do is use initially some blue. It doesn't really matter if it goes everywhere. And then just link some of that. So trying to get this this idea of a sort of crazy mess of water within that water will be reflections of the sunlight. So here's a bit of our quinacridone and our green. And you can drop a few more bits in there. Let's see what happens with that. Then I'm going to go down onto our um, our rocks here. Just following some of those shapes that we painted in earlier, and having it applied a bit more colour, we can get the reflections a bit more true. A lot of our reflections, or the um, intensity of our reflections down here have been lost, so we'll come back again. And you can just come to the edges and feather them out. We're expecting that sort of horizontalness as well. And then with this sort of clean brush, if we go there, just a bit of water. We're going to allow the darkness to blend upwards. Okay. So we still don't really have a huge contrast for that fountain of water. So to do that, I'm going to paint now outside it a bit. So that our eye knows that actually the thing within this fountain an absence of colour. I'm going to get some more of that chromium. So this is a neutral tint, this is our chromium, 
and this is our green so all the same colors we've been using layering them forward again Is that green with a bit more of our cerulean chromium so it's standing out a bit more now i think we can afford a bit more depth of color on our steps behind it let's add that in I'm going to add in a bit more darkness under the tree as well and going up our building. So it's starting to stand out now. Come on, we'll do a bit more, get a bit more of our greeny colour in. That lets us put a bit more of our darker colour in. Okay. Then, even more of our blue. I'm just going to drop it like this this time. And let it bleed out. Actually, going to pay homage to some of our other colours. So let's touch a tiny bit of red in there, and then again some of our quinacridone. So all the time we're very aware these aren't the real colours going on in that fountain, but we're trying to make it interesting. So I'm going to go back in, add a bit more shape to the actual fountain itself, see if that changes anything enhance these shadows you see every time we can go back here again look we've lost all these shadows because we're painting really nice and wet which means that as we do things we often have to go back and add more color but it means we've never fully made a made a decision we've never forced ourselves into something because the wet paint is always movable it always dries a bit lighter okay now i've got two two brushes and i do have a tendency to forget when i brought out two brushes but i am now going to use the next one so i've got a little bit of white gouache and this is where i'm going to try to just Get some of that shape of um, stuff shooting out. Just a little bit, because actually, again, if you look at it, it's mostly dots we're seeing. So then just go back in yet again and add more of our little dots in. You can also add splashes. And we'll have to come back in with these again as as um, as the page dries. Okay. So I'm going to use this little brush just as my white brush, so that we don't get that white too mucky. Now I'm going to get a bit more of the neutral and I think our windows can come out a little bit more again. And it's always just looking at things that could have more shape and enhancing some of the shadows in them. Again, our little files like things here. 
under Neptune's arm. in his beard and goes under his reef in this shadow okay so I'm just going to let that dry now and then see if we can do a little bit more with our white gash. Okay, so we've given it a little couple of minutes to dry off now. Let's see what a bit more of our grass can do here. So we can see it's already staying in place a bit better. So let's go enhance this splash effect. And then we'll get these drops in around the outside as well. You can see that as it's landing, it's causing a little ripple or a little circle around it, which is interesting to try and get in. Now, we can also use this white to start adding some highlights. I'm just going to go in a few spots. Just add in these tiny dots of white reflections. And just you can also use it almost dry brushing in a bit of texture. All right. Now for now that's the um, the watercolor done. I'm going to go back in with my pen, and this is the bigger, the 0.5 mil Unipin. And let's see what just happens if we reinvigorate some of our line work. Although watercolour is transparent, it does dull down some of our lines. And it can mean we lose a little bit of the impact. Also, it now's the time to work out. We've added a highlight there and sometimes using our pen to just exaggerate what we've done can make it stand out even more. It's a very illustrative technique. It's also very effective, I think. And then I sort of neglected a bit the manes of these horses, but we can again use our, our pen work to bring that out with these little zigzaggy shapes. Now you might feel now that actually these hooves need to be lengthened, so that's easy to do. These shapes brought back out. It's very simple just to do that, especially now we have the colour and tone everywhere. And then let's get Neptune there we go. So I'm just sort of re-emphasizing things which I think could benefit from it. I'm going to make this trident a bit thicker. 
I left it like that because initially I wasn't sure if they would I can add some colour to it. But I think as a large black object in this quite otherwise almost tender scene, it's quite effective. We get some of this shape back into the background. And then just a few of these bits of tree. By bringing them out again, we're emphasizing the contrast between this wishy washiness. And everything else. Just trying to get enough shape that tells us what's going on. And I now feel that these windows can get a little bit more detail without us losing anything. Even these ones sitting right behind can get a little bit more. I'm going to extend that balcony to make it fit with this one. But this window doesn't need to come in, I don't think. As definite background, this can stay really loose and ill-defined. I'm going to bring forward this a little bit of metal work. I'm actually going to bring this one forward a bit as well. I'm going to say bring forward. If you add bold lines to something, it sort of lifts it out of the page towards you. And we get some of these lines reflecting. Sorry, so I got cut off there, but I just continue to add a few black lines back to bring back some structure and bring out some of these details and just about looking around and seeing like where could I add something. Don't go too mad because you might regret something. And then can we bring a bit of shape into a few of these places? which the shape isn't entirely clear. And I think like here, for example, an extra line just encompassing some of this colour makes things make a little bit more sense. And some of these vertical lines are fun as well. And then the last thing will be to use my white gel pen, which is a Pentel. Uh, just a normal gel pen and we can just add I said it's good for some of these ripples on the water as an example so they can they can come in we can also add to some of this gouache we put on if we go in here lots and lots of dots and dabs Might fast forward doing this for the video. So Q time lapse. And then the last couple of highlights coming back in in places like windows where you get reflections. And on our Neptune.
Okay, and that's this all done. So we end up with, I think, a fairly interesting, to say the least, piece of Neptune's fountain in Cheltenham. And of course, like I always say, the most important bit, pop your name on it. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, um, please like and subscribe. And let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to draw or show you how I would do. And of course, give me any feedback. I always appreciate feedback. Thanks very much.